appreciate that. Right. Thank you. And now to uh, Mr. Jans for six minutes or less, please. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and, and thank you, Minister, for being here today. Um, and I want to thank the department for also bringing me and our former colleague, Finn Donnelly, to Big Bar so we could see firsthand the challenge that does, does exist there. Um, we know that some of the stocks were, were weak before uh, Big Bar, the Big Bar slide, Minister. And I just want to hear, do you have a clear plan on how you're going to activate recovery actions for salmon that were affected by Big Bar, but also those other weak Fraser River salmon stocks? Um, thank you for the question. As I've said, we are looking at a number of different measures to deal with the, the Fraser River salmon stocks, particularly because of the Big Bar landslide. Uh, we have, um, uh, we're investigating emergency conservation enhancement options that include the hatchery. Uh, that's some, we have actually already started with, uh, that's at, the holding facility is now open for for that operation. Um, we, of course, with the, the renewal of the Fisheries Act, have also committed to uh, building stocks as well as rebuilding plans. Those are all things that are ongoing. Um, you know, we, there's a number of different challenges facing salmon as well as things like uh, habitat restoration is one, which we will be, we're, we're working with the BC Shrift Program on uh, with communities engaged in that, as well as coastal erosion. So there's a number of different measures we're taking to, to help protect those stocks. I'd, I'd love to dive in just on some questions around that. Uh, you talked about hatcheries, and we know that uh, there are a number of DFO operated hatcheries in BC, but there's none, uh, to my understanding, um, that are in the middle or upper Fraser, where the salmon that were affected by Big Bar reside. Is there, um, if there were hatchery facilities in that area, they could be used to help accelerate the recovery of these impacted populations. What is the plan around uh, that minister? There is actually uh, a plan around using hatcheries for the upper Fra Fraser River. I could maybe turn that over to the deputy to further uh, address that question. Yep, uh, Rebecca, I think you're best placed to answer that. Yes, um, so there, there is a study underway right now, a feasibility study, to look at the existing infrastructure that's available above the Big Bar site uh, from a hatchery perspective and what it would take the cost um, to, uh, to invest in those facilities um, to support the enhancement activities. Mm -hmm. And so there, there definitely is a, um, some work underway that's already started to respond to that exact question. And, and uh, sure. Is there a commitment from the department to accelerate uh, that project just in light of the crisis that we're in? Our commitment right now is to do everything we can to mitigate the challenges we're facing because of Big Bar. Uh, those are, you know, parts of th those are all parts of that that solution. Um, you know, we want to make sure that we do everything we can for the so so there's natural passage of fish, but we will be looking at other measures to make sure that we're addressing uh, the the ongoing challenges with the reduced stocks. You talked about habitat and the BC Shrift program. Our understanding, and again, just back to Finn Donnelly, who is now the chair of Rivershed Society and many of the organizations working in the Fraser, they're saying that we need about $250 million just for the Fraser. And I think coastal people believe we need about $500 million in restoration just in the next five years. Right now, the $148 million falls quite uh, far short of what's needed. Can we get a commitment from you that you're going to do what's needed to bring our stocks back in terms of restoration and habitat protection? Sorry, I'm having a hard time unmuting my my mic. I apologize. Uh, I will tell you that, um, you know, we have worked very closely with the... Pro you're muted. You're muted, Minister. I apologize. I'm not sure why that keeps happening. Um, I, I will say that, uh, as you as you are aware, that the BC Shrift Fund is a program that we we jointly manage with the province of British Columbia. Uh, we are currently uh, we have uh, over 70 million dollars worth of projects already approved. We're continuing to assess projects on a regular basis. Um, we know that there's a lot that needs to be done for the salmon stocks, but we do need to work with the province and in, in order to make sure that we are able to uh, continue with this program. I appreciate that. And, and in my writing, I know many, many applications were denied. Uh, so in, in terms of coastal people and the people that are out there 
doing the volunteer work, mainly recreation or fishers, um, they're saying that this is necessary and they feel like the government is not investing even close to what's necessary. You talked about the Cohen Commission. I appreciate you bringing that up and implementation of the recommendations. Certainly, we know that Justice Cohen said that uh, open net aquaculture has a significant impact on uh, Fraser River uh stocks, especially sockeye. Um, we know that right now we're seeing record amounts of sea lice uh, still open that fish farms with PRV and uh, disease infected fish, massive die-offs that we've seen recently, and the government still hasn't come up with a plan to move to closed containment. When will that plan happen, and when will the implementation of that plan take place? We're continuing, and you, as you know, Mr. Johns, my my mandate letter was very uh, was clear on, on moving from uh, uh, open net to close containment. Um, we are continuing to do the consultation process, as you are aware. This is a, something that's extremely important to First Nations communities as well as the BC government. We're working in collaboration, uh, in consultation but with I, them. I would argue it wasn't things. very clear <laughs> that, and that, I, that mandate letter because they expected that you'd be moving to close containment by 2025. Not uh, we're continuing to work with the First Nations communities that are going to be impacted with the with the uh, with going forward, and we're finding solutions as we go. Um, Thank you for that, Mr. Jones. 